There's very few players in the world who can match what stars can do with mass bat waves. But let's see what he can do here as he pairs it with his Lalo and risk this entire war on an attack that is definitely a little bit off meta. Our defending world champions and this year's number one seed is in preparation to head back out to Finland and defend their title. They dropped out of all of the tournaments except for the Global Clash Cup. And I had some uh, computer issues here, but luckily we had a friend who was able to record the war here and send it over to us so we can take a close look and see what happens here as they fight for survival. The top 128 teams have been reseeded into a single elimination bracket. If they survive to the top eight, then they will play in the next phase of the tournament, the final phase on the first week of December. So it looks like Gaku was able to push the E-Drags through the Town Hall, got the model down, got the Clan Castle down. Now the question is, can he close out the rest of the base here? The Queen has been deployed over the top there. The World Champion over the right there. I'm looking for the King, and while I was talking, I think the King might have gone down there, so he's not doing too great here by the looks of it. He needs to get the defensive Queen out of the way there. She is the biggest obstacle left on the base here. The last E-Drag goes down. The Warden keeps on moving. RC moves forward there. Defensive King. Okay, well, that defensive King is going to be a nightmare because that's going to take out his World Champion, and... He'll have the queen with ability left here to be able to coast into the backside, but I don't know if he can make it through both the king and the queen here. Kind of an interesting choice to use E-Drags on this base here, honestly, because usually we like to see the E-Drags go through as many of the defensive heroes as possible, but he attacked in the top corner with the E-Drags, and we have the king and the queen in the bottom corner, so I'm surprised he didn't actually send in the E-Drags from that bottom side to get more of those defensive heroes out of the way nice and early, but the queen's still moving. The ward is still moving. He's got 50 seconds here. There's still, I guess, a little bit of hope here that he can pull through, but it depends kind of on how much he has left there when he goes into that expo. There goes the warden into Phoenix. Keep on moving here. Queen needs to stay to the inside here. Need to get that expo very, very quickly. If she delays and goes to the outside, he's going to be in a lot of trouble here. Uh, a little bit of a lag spike right there. And we'll keep this charging forward here. Come on, Gaku. At least get the percentage up, right? I mean, that's the downside of the queen going to the inside. Like, it does give her a chance to pull through. But if she doesn't make it through, then she dives headfirst into danger. And then she is taken down. It is a 87% here to open up for Navi, and they start with a miss. Now the question is, can this underdog team take down our defending world champions? They have an opportunity right out of the gate here to take the lead against Navi. So we'll see if Khoisan can get it done here as he drops in a Super Archer blip and he's going to follow up with Electro Titan Smash. But he needs to get the Town Hall here. That's his number one priority. If he gets anything on top of that, every single building will increase his chances of pulling this through. But he did not invest a Warden into it. And so he's going to have the Warden for later on in the attack there. Very, very big deal. And I, I just realized that my uh, voice has returned to normal. I've, my voice has been... Uh, Kind of shot for the last couple days here, but I uh, I got some uh, something to be able to clear it up there, so it's feeling a lot better. That's that's amazing. I just realized that. <laughs> Sorry, I, you're back to the attack here. Koisan was able to secure the the monolith, the town hall, the scatter shot, and hopefully gets the funnel here. Got the full CC pull here, so we can fight it. And it is uh, looks like uh, super minions right there. Titans are going inside the base there to go take care of them, but those titans. They need to follow wherever the queen goes, and the queen's going off to the left. The titans are going to the right. And it looks like he'll go ahead and join the queen with the king right there, but the queen's gonna go to ability here. There's not really much you can do to stop that. Now, the question is, where do we put the world champion? I feel like the world champion needs to go after the multi-inferno to save the healers and the titans to try to get more percentage out of this, because I feel like it's just a percentage game at this point here, because I don't think there's a way to triple this, really, after you have so much go wrong. Specifically, you have to keep everybody together to make this attack work. Usually, the world champion will go in opposite of everybody else there and work backwards to save time. But if you have the Titans riding around a multi inferno like that, then you kind of need to deal with that. And in a hurry here, but he used the world champion at the top of the base there. Look at these blues, though. These balloons. While well, all the beams of the Inferno are tanked, they're going to make their way in, work on that Inferno. The healers are still alive. Titans are still in the area. Bloons taking strikes there. King pops his ability up at the top of the base there. And the Bloons are able to take that multi down. And these Titans continue to move. I don't know how they made it as far as they did. But that's kind of the strength of his attack here. It's just kind of a set it and release it kind of attack. And he's doing pretty well with it. Phoenix keeps on tanking up top there. And we'll get that wizard tower down. But the Titans don't really have a clear way to get through the last defenses here. I think at best it's going to end up as a time fail here. But these Titans, they just refuse to go down. 
I guess when that Rage Tower activates on the backside of the base there, he's going to be in a lot of trouble there once those Expos start burning through Titans. But look at the wall break he's able to manage in the very core of the base there. So he is able to get, uh, get some walls open there, but... Obviously, Titans are very, very bad at breaking through walls there. But look at this. He was able to get the percentage higher than Gaku. And it looks like in phase, we'll start this war with a four building advantage. Looks like Synthe is sitting off the roster today. And Dima is stepping in. If you guys didn't hear, Badzinger, Dima's old team, has disbanded. And Navi capitalized on that and was able to pick up one of the best base builders in the world. And that's going to have a big impact, I think, for Na'Vi when they go to the World Championship. So, be able to have him around to help build bases and help test bases is going to make a very, very big defensive impact for the Na'Vi team there. And that way, they can focus on their offense more. I think it's a very, very important thing that they picked him up there. And what a huge pickup there to have a free agent like that just come out of nowhere and suddenly be free to join the roster that's insane but he is a very very good attacker as well so let's see what we can do here the super archer bomb able to take out everything around the eagle artillery now the question is how efficiently can he march his heroes towards the town hall here those super archers uh they just refuse to die they're still moving on the side of the base there they'll get a couple shots at the defensive cc they get a couple of those archers there but they do eventually get picked off here and now the rest of the clan castle troops will go over and engage his heroes. But they got to complete under control right there. Electro Titan instantly burns those up and he can keep marching forward. Now, the question is, do we have the king or the queen ability to secure the talent takedown? He's going for wall breaks. The wall breaker is on the outside of the base. They're trying to get the transition for the heroes to go to the town hall. We got the wall break at the gold mine there. So we can definitely work with that. But he still has another wall breaker. But that one attacks the outside walls right behind the warder right there. Not ideal, but he does pop the king ability and then pairs it with the warden ability to make sure that he can have the maximum value out of that king ability. You want to protect all of those barbarians that are spawned to make sure that you get as much out of the king as possible. But then as soon as he goes out of that, he goes invisible and will lock onto the town hall. Looks like the king is going to go to Phoenix. He's going to go down there. And the queen was able to preserve her ability. But here we go. Royal Champion in on the bottom corner of the base there. He's got Super Barb swarming to the left side here. Trying to get this defensive Royal Champion out of the way here. She's the biggest threat. He has Headhunters on her. But the Headhunters are... One of them was picked off at least there. But the Royal Champion on offense never really got targeted right there. So she stays safe. Ability intact. That's a very, very good sign here for DMA. He's got a couple more Super Barbs in from the far left there. He keeps on picking up defenses. And with a royal champion ability i can't imagine this is gonna be a miss and that is a potential swing of the war here if navi is able to get a defense if they can stop in phase the next one then they can stop themselves from being four buildings behind but i don't know we'll see what in phase can do i've seen them a little bit in the past there and they are a very good team so we'll see what they got for us today but gg dima playing back up on the roster and getting it done for Navi. I don't know how to say this player's name, but it looks like he's got some sort of a kill squad and super hog attack here. Very interesting. Usually we see queen charges or we see superheroes with like skelly donuts, but this attack is definitely out of the ordinary. Let's see what we can do with it. I have no idea what the chances are for success on an attack like this. You don't really see a lot of, like, kill squad hog attacks anymore. You see a lot of, like, uh, zap Lalo's, obviously, and it's obviously very similar to that. But Lalo's a little bit more resilient than hogs in general, so he has to have the extra spells, like heal spells, invested into it. But let's see what he can do here. Here comes the defensive CC. He's able to get everybody to stay, get, stay together right there. Invested pretty heavy into the funnel there, but it does work out. Everybody enters into the base together. The log launcher continues to throw logs across the core, which is a very big deal. We're almost always, when we use the log launcher, we want to make sure that we are able to keep the log launcher alive and not have it take any extra damage because remember it does trade its own hp as it moves through the base there so if you have it taken any extra damage then it throws less logs overall so keep it well protected and you are going to get a ton of value out of it but he does have the heroes die out there before getting the expos he did get that rage tower pre-triggered so hopefully that fades here by the time it comes out of this freeze here but he has the first heal spell that was used early the second one as he goes to the town hall he did have two heal spells right he does get to the town hall He's got next to freeze right there, but he has the ward ability. He freezes and he wardens. Okay, I don't know if that was necessary to do both right there, but I guess we'll see how it works out for him. The world champion goes north. The hogs go south into the monolith. RC get that expo down. That's a big deal. Skeletal spell up at the top of the base. There feels early though. 
feels very, very early for that skeleton spell up on the right side. So I am a little bit concerned here about the Rogue Champion and her chances to get through the defensive queen right here. So we'll see if we'll see if he can get through because that's literally all he has left that he control this attack with is that Rogue Champion. But he does step into the queen there. And she, of course, does hold the line. RC ability did get some damage onto the other defenses in the area, and he still has a chance here with all these with all these hogs. They're gonna cross through. It's all they don't have any riders, or there's very few riders. The riders are running around behind. They might look under the queen there and take her down, but grass gillies and I guess the okay, the warden just took a clutch hit on that scatter shot there, took it down. And the warden! Come on, get that, get the queen. Got the queen! There we go! He's got the Riders on foot, the Warden, one Valkyrie, and a couple Wizards continuing to get the cleanup done there, and that was close. I was worried with that Queen there, but he just had so many troops left over there that he's able to overwhelm it. So GG in phase as they continue to sustain their lead over Navi. But Navi will continue to set the bar here for in phase as they send in Klaus with a double quake. Five Lightning, Zap, Lalo. He loves this attacker. He's been using it a lot recently. And whenever there's no battle builders that could quickly save an expo, then that combination of spells there is ideal. Throwing a giant in front of the queen. Always just providing just a little bit of tanking. Although you could let the queen take a little bit of damage there. Make sure that she has something for the unicorn to heal back up there just for maximum efficiency but if you are potentially dropping into a tesla farm it's always nice to throw in a giant out in front there just so you have a little extra buffer i think this is something that klaus likes to do there and i will never doubt klaus because there's something about the way that he does attacks there that makes so that he his heroes get way more value than other people do but the queen is going to be the first to engage the defense of CC. We have an Ice Golem in front of the King there. That Ice Golem is going to pop here soon and give him some extra support there uh, into that Expo there. But the King, I think, is going to stay to the outside, I, I think. Or maybe maybe he goes in and chases some archers there. He is going to go in there, so he will help deal with the defense of CC. Looks like Headhunters, Headhunters, and I didn't see anything big go out of there, so interesting. However, he does have the queen in position where she can pop her build and get the defensive royal champion down. We usually like to get the heroes to take out either the royal champion or the defensive queen. And in this case, if you can get that defensive royal champion out of the way there, then he can put the Lalo in from the left side and go after the defensive queen. And he kind of has to. I feel like he has to. Am I, am I wrong for thinking that? Because if he goes through the town hall with the Lalo, then he has to somehow get the headhunters that he has four of over to the queen and he has to get past the king to get him over to it so you know i guess he could just be patient here he could just delay the headhunters and not try to get him under the ward ability which i mean he popped that ward ability very very early was that is that okay <laughs> i mean klaus i feel like was i didn't see that ability did it go to auto ability or did he manually pop it early either way he does use it right early, and he does end up taking the blaster with those balloons. Slammer drops out a super dragon. It's taking the defenses in the area there. He slips in the headhunters. They lock onto the queen. They skip the king. However, they need some extra support there for the defensive king to get him out of the way there to keep his world champion safe. RC does survive. Gets the scatter shot down. Diggy takes the stun as... The Dicky is passed off to go free roaming here, but the dragon doing some good work here. He's got all the defenses basically under control here. I think he's got it under control. I think he's got the triple, so Klaus gets it done. It was a little bit uh, shaky there. I don't know what happened with that uh, warden ability, but in the end, it works out, so... I guess everything's fair game here. Let's pass it back to in phase as they will be forced to triple again. Matching one triple from Navi is a good start. But if they want to sustain their lead here, then they have to do it again. Vinny diving in with a blimp to sail across over top of the model there. Took a black air bomb, but it does arrive at the town hall and drops out the Yeti bomb. He gets pulled by that tornado trap, but he still takes the town hall down. But, oh, I thought he might actually get pulled over there and get the model down as well, which would have been a very, very big pickup here. But that's okay. He got the full CC pull there. He will... Now moving on to the Eagle Artillery, and he can find out the CC on its way to the base there. So that works out. I mean, if we're going to use the Blimp, then typically we like to use it to set a funnel here. But at least he gets the CC pull, and he gets the Town Hall out of the way very, very early into the tag. I honestly would have used the Ward Ability while I was pushing the Hogs and Miners into the base there to protect that Blimp. But he wanted the short approach there, and it did work out for him. So no harm, no foul. And let's see what he can do as he makes his way forward here. Watch that scatter shot on his right flank. 
if he has that scatter shot hit the healers there he's gonna be in a lot of trouble here but he does go ahead and put in the hogs and minus in from the very top and he'll put the king to go to the outside also keep an eye on the king there the king gets targeted by the monolith that's going to cause a lot of problems out there but the queen could end up getting forced into the walls there but as long as she stays tanky you know that's got a shot as it turns out to her healers right there he's erected that very very soon uh oh uh oh all right <laughs> well the queen is in trouble here come on Vinny. Queen picks the tanking back up there, but she lost all the healers. She has the Phoenix here. I'm noticing a lot of people running Phoenix on the Queen during Hog Miner hybrid attacks. I don't know what's up with that, but the King stays alive on the outside. The Miners do end up reaching the Monolith, and the Queen does end up engaging the defensive road champion under Phoenix, and she actually might win that fight there before she runs out of invincibility. Yes, she does. This actually can still triple here. Phoenix keeps on moving where the Queen left off. And could pick up that backside bomb tower. That'd be a very big pickup here in a hog miner attack here. But the multi inferno is the biggest threat left on the base. Still got the warden, still has the king. King still has good HP. If the Phoenix is able to clear the bomb tower and he can get a little bit of cleanup over to the left side there, then he can potentially force the king back into that multi inferno. King's running yak. Yeah, he is. I, that's interesting as well. You don't see uh, yak used a lot there. I mean, even after we add, they added five levels to the yak there, we still don't see it a lot there. But. There's still a lot of miners here. I'm just realizing there's a lot of miners there stacked with the king. They do end up getting into the multi-inferno. He's absolutely got it under control here. It's another triple for in phase. And they will continue to stay ahead of Navi by four buildings. I gotta hand it to in phase. They're playing very well today. Be able to sustain a lead against Navi for this far of the war there with the pressure on. And let's also remind you guys that this is an elimination match. So let's see what Kazuma can do here with the Electro Dragons. We already saw Gaku fail with the Electro Dragons on that first attack of the war. And that's why Navi is in this position in the first place. So maybe Kazuma will have a different result there. Maybe he could triple and it could go unanswered. Or maybe in phase is going to control this war all the way to the end. But the Flame Flinger in from the top there. We do have the King right there. So I'm not sure how far that Flame Flinger is expected to go. He did throw in a Barbarian. Now Balloon's over the left side of the base there. Gonna go pick up the Cannon. Pick up the Arch Tower like that. He does get the one on the Cannon to tank for the one on the Archer Tower. And he ends up taking out both defense. That was actually really, really clever what he did with those two Balloons. With the way that he arranged the tanking on that. And it does work out quite nicely for him. But I don't know what the purpose of that is. He puts in more balloons down at the very bottom. Able to pick up a cannon down there. Is he, get, he might be setting up for an entry on the left side here. But there is a sweeper facing that way. He is going for that. Sneak Goblins working next to the Electro Dragons right there. But the Sneaky Goblins are in a weird spot right there. And the Sneaky Goblins end up pulling out Rocket Balloons and Ice Golems out of the defensive CC. That is a mistake. That was not supposed to happen. And that's going to distract the E-Drags as they go to the Town Hall. That could get very, very dicey very, very quickly. But he does get the freezes in place there. He does freeze up the Monolith as well. Give those E-Drags more time to work there. And they do take the Town Hall down. Now the question is, they get that Monolith out of the way. The CC obviously with the uh, with the Ice Gloms and the Rocket Balloons already being deployed there is not a primary target. But it goes down as collateral as he takes the Monolith down. And the E-Drags are getting a little bit of a regrouping here. As it does look like a Dragon Rider was able to come out of the Flame Flinger and support at the very top here. Now all those E-Drags are getting a regrouping and if they go in there and get the defensive king and then the world champion down then what we talked about in gaku's attack with the hero actually ends up working exactly the way that you'd prefer it to happen he's got two freezes he's got a rage and the heroes will march their way through his world champion takes the inside path there to get all the things that the king and the queen can't reach and everybody else will just get the king's tanking e-drags make their way to the world champion they're completely overwhelming the world champion up there but the multi doing a lot of damage to him up there a little problem. Tesla farm in the backside. King will pop his ability. RC marches forward here. She'll go to the multi-inferno. She'll get the sweeper as well. She'll pop her ability in the process, though. And the ability doesn't actually one-shot any defenses. But the queen ability still intact. Rage still intact. Freeze still intact. And I guess Kazuma is going to fare a bit better than Gaku did as he does get his way through. And it's looking like he's trying to swag a bunch of spells here. It looks like that is the case as he holds on to a rage and a freeze and once again the pressure's back to in phase here we go again once again if in phase is able to triple 
then they will sustain their lead by four buildings. They have answered every single triple that Navi was able to put up so far, and we'll see if they can continue this trend. Flameflinger did deploy the giant over to the side of the base there, and that was able to take out the cannon that he deployed directly into, but he does quickly get the arch tower down, and a queen charge will move in from the very, very top of the base here. Look at the queen charge value. She can pick up a multi-inferno and two air defenses and get the defensive king out of the way there. So we talked about with the e-drag attack there, and it's a very similar situation with this attack here. We want to make sure we get as many of the defensive heroes out of the way as early as possible. So if the queen charge can take out that defensive king, then that is one less thing for his world champion to deal with on the far back side of the base there. But with three air defenses taken down, the Tesla farm taken down by the queen charge if she goes inside the base there he could push her all the way to the town hall here but i don't think he will he'll recall her out and where do we redeploy i don't know i'm not even sure maybe to the left side over by the flame flinger to go into the eagle artillery and more air defenses that's an option but he will actually go to the right side of the base there use the king to push the queen in and the dragons will go on the other side there and that will give the queen and the king lots of cross tanking. So we got to keep the king and the queen alive here. We want to make sure they survive to the back side. We can't really count on the super dragons to survive to the far back end of the base there. And we're just mainly trying to get them to get the town hall down. Get the clan castle mostly dealt with there. And then we can hopefully get the the uh, monolith down as well there. But he does end up pulling a lava hound out there. As the king's ability ends up having a couple of barbarians straight too close to the clan castle and he does pull out a lava hound the queen's chasing it right now queen under very very critical danger right now she is alive though she's alive he does now need to get this monolith under control here he lost all the super dragons i don't know about this right now he got the defensive queen mostly damaged up there but the world champion is now going to start to work with the king right there there's still a chance he can pull through here let's not give up on him just yet there's a very very real chance that he keeps his life the queen pops her ability and get stuck in the tornado. That's not a good time for a tornado trap right there. Queen getting retargeted. No, our archers are getting targeted. She stayed alive. She steps in, freezes the model, saves her. But that's the last line of defense there he has to protect. He's got an RC ability. He's got a baby dragon going to the outside. Baby dragon not getting targeted by the air defense. RC going to go into the, the already weakened defensive queen. But the RC is getting targeted there by the defensive queen. And she pops her ability, hits the backside defenses. And he does get through the queen. RC picks up the healers! That's a very big deal! Ground skellies, watch the clock, 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 time, time, time! The ground skellies stalling up the road champion, delaying the stun for the diggy into the expo. Expo goes down, and this queen will not have the time. It's a time fail! And it is five buildings left on the board here, and that means that they have now given up the advantage. It is a one building and one star lead now for Navi. This has been a wild war, but it all comes down to the last two attacks. If Stars is able to get the triple, then Navi wins it outright, 14 stars. But if he misses it by even a single building here, then in phase gaming could steal it away from them on the final attack if they can respond with a triple. So let's see what happens here. Stars diving in with a, is this a kill squad? Lalo with bats? I love to see these bat attacks here. There's very few players in the world who can match what stars can do with mass bat waves. But let's see what he can do here as he pairs it with his Lalo and risk this entire war on an attack that is definitely a little bit off meta. Looks like the hero's diving in towards the multi-infernos, but I assume he wants to secure the talent takedown here. Put a lot of force in this area. The king is going to get to the multi-inferno on the left. The world champion gets to the multi-inferno on the right. The queen is going to have her targets removed. She's going to turn north. That's a bit of a problem here because if that multi goes down, the queen really doesn't have a reason to step in. She goes to the outside, and he needs to get a redirect here, get to the town hall. He puts that invisibility down, and the queen takes the turn and goes back to the town hall, or she'll pop her ability and take it down there before she can get distracted by the defensive CC, which is looking like a whole lot of archers, a ton of headhunters there, but the poison is able to get them all under control here, and here we go, the moment of truth. Can stars clutch this triple, clutch this win. There's still headhunters running around here. They're gonna lock out of the warden here in like two seconds. Electric Owl will try to fight them, but the warden will be forced to a, oh, he already popped his ability. He already burned it, so he goes down. Here comes the bats. It's gonna get dicey here. The any splash damage left on the base here can quickly remove a lot of these 
with these balloons here, but uh, there's not really any splash damage left. He's got it all under control. Okay, this is done. <laughs> okay, all right, well, I was, a, I was a little concerned there with the warning got taken out there, but I obviously should not have been because the bat swarm keeps moving. The balloons are still alive. He's got a minute left on the clock here, and he's got cleanup for days. And I guess he's got some extra freezes just as icing on the cake there. So, GG stars. I mean, I love to see what he can do with bats. It's always extremely impressive. He's got an eye for it, and he doesn't break him out very often, but when he does break him out, He's one of the few people who use it with Lalo and to great success here as he will lock in the win. 14 stars for Navi. They put it out of reach and they're moving on to the round of 64. We will see them again as a result before they head out to the world championship. And it does look like the final attack for in phase gaming. If they did have the opportunity if stars missed would have ended up with a time fail on this one here so it it is what it is it is what it is well played today in phase you definitely put up a good fight here against navi but in the end they will be eliminated 12 stars